السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Last time we talked about the contrasting paradigms Okay, we, on one hand we have the paradigm of the uh, people of the right that the Quran uh, uh, referred to uh, them, uh, and they are in, in paradise asking each other what happened to, to those that they refer them as mujrimin, criminals, who basically ended up in, in uh, the hellfire, the saqar, and they are asking, okay, uh, they ask them, Okay, ma salakakum fi saqar. What made you end up in, in this uh, type of uh, destination? And they enumerated four things that you can tell that the others have the opposite, or they are diametrically opposite really to, to, to them. This is why I refer to, the, uh, to this as contrasting paradigms, okay? And I think it is a, a tool that we can, you can use as you are reading through Quran and uh, to, to extract these contrasting paradigms, okay? Because it is not just, okay, oh, these people went, uh, ended up in Jannah and these people end up in Hellfire, but we don't really like go deeper, okay? Quran is asking us to, to go deeper when uh, uh, Quran is presenting it to us as a conversation going on, okay? So this conversation has to ha occur here because it will be meaningful, it will be productive rather than over there when there is nothing you can do about it uh, at that time. You see, I mean, that's, uh, I think, the, the, the importance of it to recognize uh, uh, these contrasting paradigms just to uh, give you another example that we talked about it in the past. Quran, we have two short surahs. One is Al Kawthar, and the other one is At Takathur. If you look at the basic root, okay, of the the linguistic root of these two words, is the, basically the same, from something that is increasing. Kathura, Yakthuru. Kawthar is really like more. Okay, with, with capital M, if you like. Okay, like, أَكْثَرُ uh, الْكَثِيرِ A lot, more than what you think. Takathur is still uh, like something, uh, a lot, but as the result of compiling, you see, accumulating, then one, you be. Uh, uh, those who are accumulating, they become under the control of what they accumulated, while the others were given more to, to become more, if you like, to refine themselves, okay? Inna We have given you in abundance, okay? So it means this, this, Abundance that is given to you is to make you a better human being, <clears throat> to advance. Yes. The kasar is form six of the word kasara, which is like, you know, kasara, kasar, and then the kasar, adding of the top to it, to make it under control and make it passive. So, so yeah, because uh, the, the other one, is say, the, the verse is saying, al-hakum takathur the compiling, the accumulation has diverted your attention from the higher goals and objectives. So they lost control over what they are really accumulating. This, again, these are two contrasting paradigms. Uh, uh, try it. Try it with, with your kids, with your colleagues, with your neighbors, with your, I mean, relatives, and see that Oh my God, we, we knew these verses for a long time, but never thought about it in this way. What, what does it really mean to me? Because Quran is really like 
uh, addressing every one of us with this letter. Inna <laughs> al kawthar. Okay. So don't fall <laughs> into al hakum at takathur. Although they may look the same, both of them meaning more and excess and and you see what I mean. So that's the, the beauty of it. And you can build on. Uh, on, on this using the same tool to see, okay, these are two different mindsets, two different visions, two different ways of looking at the world and the ways we order our world. That's, that's what we are really trying to do here. So th th these four things, okay, that they said, they confessed about them, that led them to that destination, they were not among those who pray. لم نكو من المصلين. لم نكو نطعم المسكين. They were not helping the poor and the needy. وكنا نخوض مع الخائدين. I mean, literally, it means we were blind followers. We were going with the flow. However, they, if, if they are sinning, we were following them, doing the same thing. Okay, and they thought or they believed that the day of a judgment is a lie. وكنا نكذب بيوم الدين حتى أتانا اليقين until what is al yaqeen? If there is one thing that every human being agrees upon, is this basically death? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, the, you may have controversy here and there in any, on any issue. <laughs> but that, everybody knows that nobody is immortal. So Quran call it al yaqeen certainty. Everything else, you can <laughs> show some uncertainty about it. Okay? But uh, that, everybody believes that it is going to happen. Okay, so the, you can infer that Ashabul Yameen, Yameen is a symbol of power, strength, capacity, resolve, determination, okay, uh, control. Somebody put this. Yeah, <laughs> winter time. Can somebody turn it off? Can you turn it off? So the, the last time when what we were saying and we were discussing in what way these four things help the people of the right, okay, to, to, to how they were able to liberate themselves. Why? Because the verse before that, it says, verse number um, 37, and we said this is a statement from Quran, okay? Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. Every human soul, is a hostage of what it earns or achieves or act or say or whatever, okay? So we are hostage. We are hostages of what we basically can do in this world. So, the, uh, and so how we can be liberated from the chains of what we earn or what we do. It's very similar to uh, the idea uh, of Ibrahim alayhi salam when he addressed his people. أَتَعْبُدُونَ مَا تَنْحِتُونَ You have sculptured that idol. And then you are the creator of that idol. And then you worship what you have sculptured, what you have created. So they, they did it by their own hands. But instead of being under their control, it controlled them. It's so symbolic. That's Very symbolic. Okay. Uh, uh, one of the 
contemporary uh, 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 poets, Palestinian poet, used to say, "Ana hurrun min ibadati ams." I am free from the worship of yesterday. It's, it's amazing. Uh, yesterday could also mean he is, he is meaning history. Because this is one of the, of the uh, thick uh, prisons that really chain us sometimes. Okay? We always say these people are still living in the history. Liberating our, ourselves from history not by ignoring it but by understanding it the same way at the level of the individual. Understanding the child in us doesn't mean that we have to eliminate it, but how to understand it in order to liberate ourselves from it. Not allowing it to suppress the adult in us, which means what? The ability to think. You see what I mean? The, the child in us will not allow us because it's all about emotions and feelings. Nothing wrong about them. But don't let them suppress. <laughs> we need both. <laughs> we need to think and feel. Not to separate them. But not to be under the control at the individual level of the child in us, at, at the level of society by yesterday, by history if you like. So how prayer will liberate us? And I, I really want you to see how the kids, when I told them that we need to approach prayer as a method of liberation, their eyes were wide open. What are you talking about? Because they were thinking Salat is like a burden. Do this, don't do that. Uh, you have to, to be, uh, put your foot close to the foot of the person beside you. Something that doesn't make sense to them, doesn't make, doesn't transform them. You see what I mean? We have looked at the minutia and the things from the outside, but forgot what is the main function of and the purpose of the and if you, I mean, I, I will not dwell too much because we have talked a lot, but just if you take the f four or five states from the prayer, standing up, straight, it liberates you from oppression because you, it transforms you from a bystander to an upstander. You stand up to the truth, to justice against oppression. And I, I mean it because if you go historically, okay, with, with, with Musa alayhi salam, how was the, their, how is their prayer? Standing up all the time. You don't see ruku' or sujood in a, a Jewish prayer. And they are all the time moving. Standing up because they have to stand up to the oppression of the Pharaoh. How are you going to bring it? to their consciousness, even in their own prayer, in their own worship, they have to internalize that, meaning otherwise they will not stand up. You, you see what I mean? So it's connected, it's not separated. Praying is something, understanding to oppression is something else. No, how you can integrate both. It became part of, of your life. You see, of what you, it helps you to face the challenges in your life. Transcend, uh, uh, ruku' is a symbol of transcendence because you are liberating yourself from your own sins, from your own wrongdoings, from your own weaknesses. This is what happened with Dawood alayhi salam. The moment he realized he made a mistake, what did he do? فَاسْتَغْفَرَ رَبَّهُ وَخَرَّ رَاكِعًا وَأَنَاف رَاكِعًا, ruku' bowing. So imagine yourself every time you bow, you bring to, to, to your consciousness everything you have done before or that day or how you want to prepare yourself for that day. And then in the, in the sujood, 
it's really the liberation from any type of victory, because it is a victory by itself to assume an advanced location closer and position closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a big achievement. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want us to succumb to that achievement, to liberate yourself to a higher, more advanced location. And it is really the antidote to arrogance. <laughs> is that right? It liberates. R read Quran, you will say every time. وَهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ They make sujood and they are in state of no arrogance. إِنَّمَا يُؤْمِنُوا بِآيَاتِنَا الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهَا خَرُّوا سُجَّدًا وَهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ this wow, don't think it is really a simple letter. It really, we call it in the, in the, in when you want to uh, uh, analyze a sentence, you call it wow al-hal. What is the state? It, wallahi, this is, this is, I mean, uh, you see, it's, it's connected. The, 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 the language is not haphazard. It is really re reflecting the state, the state of no arrogance when you are making sujood. Tashahud is really the biggest ceremony <laughs> because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be present. The, the prophets will be present. The, the believers and the righteous people will be present. Say it. At-tahiyyatul mubarakatul tayyibatul lillah. السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين for what أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله to make this شهادة this تشهد okay you are doing it in the present is this submission or elevation is this submission or elevation tell me elevation don't call Islam submission Islam is elevation to assume that and in your prayer you are going in that direction. Is this liberation or not? Is that uh, you, you, you will be Rahina <laughs> hostage or you uh, or this is one of the keys to that prison if you like to liberate ourselves. So this how prayer will be a liberating action. Yes? Um, it, going to this uh, passage, the verse with the Rahina, mm -hmm. could uh, this also mean that the, in the, the Akhirah, yes. that whatever one has done in this world, good or bad, mm -hmm. will be preserved, nothing is lost, and there will be an accounting taken care of. Okay? So the book of being, at the end of the book of being, whoever has done more good than bad, the, he belongs to the Ashab al -Yameen. On the other hand, the guys who, who didn't, whose deeds didn't add up to positive, they end up in uh, Jahannam. Unless, unless, again, if you read the verse, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ رَهِينَ إِلَّا There is an exception. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yes. That exception that raised the question that this is more than, yeah, okay. you see? Yeah, yeah. So how to liberate yourself from what you have? This is a very, I am not, yes, I'm not yeah. blaming the previous really commentator. This is very advanced, really idea. I would not expect people at that time to reach it, okay? To, to think of, because we are thinking of things from outside to, to chain us. But something that you have done, to chain you, it's an advanced idea. It doesn't like occur a lot. It requires a lot of understanding of the human being. Uh, I was thinking of an example when we were talking about this concept. It's like a person who's climbing a mountain. Mm -hmm. So he has necessary stuff that he needs. He has enough, like water supplies. But if he goes, keep going up, and he's collecting stuff, like rocks on his way, 
he's slowing himself down yes. and he's like becoming like oh yeah I accomplished this right but there is much more higher for him to go right wow. so that I was just yes. thinking about that you very know, beautiful you just, you just weigh yourself down by cl- collecting stuff on the way because those are just there to give you guidance like yes. those things are there yes. just to help you yes. move up yes. not to slow you down exactly they have to help you right they are means not an end by themselves this is exactly what Imam Ali used to say radiallahu he said come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala light what is light hafif <laughs> not with lot of weights lot of burdens on your on your shoulders okay that will impede you from reaching your objective like the, the, the example that you are basically giving. So Imam Ali was also aware how these things can really obstruct, block our way. And we, what we say, we say, these people are stuck, stuck in time, stuck in place. I mean, what do they need? They need to be liberated from what they have done so far. So, Even if it is good, this is the point. Even if it is good, and that brings us to the idea of shukr. Because, and again, فَعْبُدِ اللَّهَ وَكُنْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ If, if ibadah, any type of ibadah, any uh, thing that we do to bring us closer to Allah, if it is not done, out of gratitude, then we have something of a transaction that we are looking for, okay? But the gratitude is the pure <laughs> thanking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, really liberating yourself from your own ego. What does it mean when I say, thank you, Noor? Thank you, Sister Arshia, okay? What does it really mean? That I am acknowledging my need but who doesn't thank? The arrogant, the self-sufficient. Oh, you see what I mean? Who think they've done everything on their own. On their own, but in reality, they are really it's deceiving themselves. Them. Exactly, exactly. Imam Ali again, radiyallahu anhu. And ta'bud Allah shukran. If you if you worship Allah subhanahu wa taala out of gratitude, fatilka ibadatul ahrar. This is the worship of the free. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Imam Ali radiallahu saying something that deep? And I want you to connect next week. It's Thanksgiving. Okay? Don't let people fall into the problem of how it started and, and, and the, all the things that surrounded it. Look, forget about it. Take the value. Is it a high value or not? Oh, yeah. High value. Celeb- you celebrate it or not? Yes. You celebrate high values. And let the people understand. Nobody knows. I'm telling you. Make the connection with the freedom because freedom resonates in the minds of people here, in particular in this country. Because it was <laughs> built on the value of a freedom. Connect the shukr and the freedom together and see the result. You will see the result for yourself. You will see light coming from their eyes. So, what yes. is the exact meaning of the hina? Hostage. If, if I want really to use the, the very literal, I mean, translation. Okay, for example, when they take people, unfortunately, hostages. In Arabic, we say rahaan. Yeah, rahila. And Rahan, yeah, which means what? I, if I put, if I put, of, or like somebody mortgage. puts my, my, my uh, house, Rahina. Mortgage. I cannot, exactly, Mon, you are right. So what does that really mean? That I cannot really like de- deal with it the way I want because it is not. Yes, yes. I mean, it's on, on paper, it, it says I am the owner <laughs> because nobody wants to take any, <laughs> any risks, okay? But the, because the, the bank has lien on it or a third party has a lien on it, is that right? Yeah. So I cannot, so uh, as if I am 
hostage <laughs> to, to, to the mortgage or to that third party, okay? I cannot really like uh, 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 deal with it freely. Is that right? I cannot go and say, oh, I want to, to sell you the, <laughs> that house or give me some money and you, it is yours. They cannot do that. Is that right? So you, you see how, so think about it at the level of the human being now. Okay, what makes us hostages? Hostages to what? To everything we do, to everything we accumulate, to everything we achieve, to everything we err, err on. Even our own mistakes, our errors. Even our, our families. Our no question. Every, because this is really yeah. part of like what you yeah. have. You see what I mean? This is why, this is how you can understand إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ عَدُوٌّ لَكُمْ And how, uh, your kid is your enemy? Yeah, but, it's, but again in this meaning that you are saying that they block you. If you, if you don't, you see if you, if they be, the yes. Yeah, if you are serving them and not serving Allah. Yeah, or, or, or not really like, th this is something you are entrusted with. <clears throat> okay? I mean, the other day somebody asked me about the tattoos. I, mean, I think, look, I am not here like to get, tell you, is it, it right or wrong, halal or haram, but let us approach it. If you have money, okay? Can you do whatever you want with it? Can you go and, God forbid, like uh, buy uh, alcohol or something like that? No. So why? So, but, but it's your money. You own it. Why you cannot? Which means that you are entrusted with that money. You don't own that money. There is big, the same thing. I said, your body. Don't tell me that I, this is my body, I can do whatever I want with it. You are entrusted with that body. I did not have to, to go any further. They got it. <laughs> they got it. I don't have to tell them, yes, no, halal, haram, this is not my job. This is not my job. Okay? My job is really like to show the way, how to think, how you reach that conclusion, the process itself. Make sense? See, I'm, I'm, if I start immediately talking about, nobody will understand. I'm talking about middle, middle school and, and high schooler. I mean, what, what, what type? I mean, I have to understand what their limitations. But believe me, they understand immediately. You know what they say about al mujrimin I ask them, give me a, a hashtag. You know what was the hashtag? Mm -hmm. After we discussed a like, little bit like what does it really mean. They said, thief. They have stolen their life. They were, because we were talking about entrustment, uh, I mean like you are entrusted. And so, so they, 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 they stole what they are entrusted with. Wallahi, this is very deep. I, I, don't you think? How come? 15, 16 year old boy or girl will come up with, with, with an idea like that. But it's true. <laughs> but it is really deep. Don't undermine <laughs> our kids. But provide them with something. But with that, you've also changed them forever. Like, you can't. <sighs> Can't deny uh, do, uh, do you think I will be like, uh, uh, or their parents will be watching over their shoulders all their life? Give them the tools and they will, they will deal. They know, sorry, they know how to deal with it. Again, we said like when you give, you are liberating yourself of what you have. Amwalukum wa awladukum. Adu. You see, in that sense. Nobody is against having money or wealth or property. No, no, you are supposed to, to, to work and earn, okay? But don't let what you earn control you. Keep it under your own control. You, can, you know where to spend it and how to liberate yourself from it. And we said, like, we need to change 
the way we approach our brothers and sisters for fundraising. Fundraising is not to, to, to gather money. If we change it to become a way to transform them, everybody will give. And don't ask for big <laughs> amounts. The ones who are ready to, to, be, to give more, they will give. But don't really embarrass the one who cannot give more than 100 or 200 dollars. Yeah. Give them a chance to transform. Give them a chance. You think that only the rich has to liberate himself or herself from what they have? Also the poor. <laughs> the, the poor is not asked to fast. <laughs> And we always say, oh, we have to fast to, to think about the poor. The poor, then the poor, they don't have to, to fast? You see, you see what I mean? Like, every one of us, okay, need, oh, but it, the, the scale may be different. You see what I mean? So, or one is more difficult than the other, but the idea is really how to liberate ourselves of what we have really on. Not to become hostage to, to, to them. And really, this, I mean, the, the one that is really amazing to me, I mean, talking about prayer and charity is very common, okay? And people all the time talk about them. But to bring in the second surah revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi it's really like uh, uh, amazing to say the least. Nakhudu ma'al khaidin, as I said, like, we were like blind followers. Okay? Don't, don't, you, don't you see it today? If you read the news today, today, not yesterday, today, you will see kunna nakhudu ma'al khaidin. When you see somebody saying, okay, I don't care if that individual did this or that, Okay, but I don't want to see somebody from another party coming, taking that position. What, what does that really mean? That we are try, uh, coming together, okay? Coming together, okay? But we are not interested. Like in the truth or what is right, what is wrong, what is the value. So, you know, in this book, uh, mm -hmm. this translation, it's it's a different, it says, but we used to talk vanities with vain talkers. Uh, which means that they were doing something wrong along with others. No, I know, but they're talking about talking. So you're saying this is about action. Action, definitely. I mean, I mean the, the translation doesn't uh, give it. What you earn. Yes, but it doesn't really give you, honestly, that translation yeah, that is very limited, yes. That's so limited then. Yes, let, yeah. th let me tell you that from where, <laughs> Let, tell, let me tell you the word Nakhud from where it is coming. It is amazing. It is amazing that you, you see in politics, okay, what is happening, okay, how people come together, okay, Nakhud Ma'al Khadin, they are like ganging together against somebody else just because he belongs to another party, not because he is good or bad or what he is bringing. <laughs> you see what I mean? And they are. This is, this is not politics. This is tribalism. So this Thank is you. tribalism. This is tribalism. That's what they're talking about. Uh, let me tell you. Yes. So, uh, That's completely so different. Is this is uh, an Arab. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, Literally speaking, Arab Mahudu is something that you are walking in mouth. Exactly. Exactly. The, the, the literal meaning <laughs> was uh, Yeah. Also to reflect when people are just blindly the following. That is like mass, mass talk, bad talk. But it is literally when you, when you walk in the mouth. Where do we see this picture today? In the same news, they were talking about politics. At the same time, they are talking about what happened during the flood. During, what happened during flooding? You have the, uh, water and you walk in the water. Do you know what is happening? What, what may be in the water? This is Nakhud. When you are walking in water or in mud, but you don't see, you don't know what is happening below you. Like you, you are on your, you don't see. And in fact, they put it 
like an, uh, uh, an animation that you cannot see how deep it is because you, you can see it from above, but you cannot see below, okay, how, how deep really it is and people drown this way, however they are in their, they think, oh, it is like a few centimeters and I can pass with my car and then the water start really like rising, rising and then it basically go and they drown. You see where, where it is leading? So what I am saying, like, however you are talking in, in what happen, happens during really like catastrophes or like flooding or something like that or hurricane or, or earthquake, okay? Or what is happening in politics are basically the same. <laughs> in fact, this is really a very like um, physical, yeah. I mean, uh, like... Uh, pertinent to now. Very pertinent. Okay, you are, I mean, like, we are blind followers. Are they leaders? Are they leaders? Are they really walking with, with open eyes and, and seeing exactly what is happening so that they can, are prepared? Okay, so how to, how to deal with it? How to liberate really ourselves from being really mere or blind followers. What are, what, then we have to ask ourselves, what is really our objective? What are we interested in? Are we interested just to be with others? <laughs> okay? <laughs> the peer pressure and the social pressure, or, or we, want, are we are interested in the value. That's really the, 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 the question. How to liberate ourselves from being? <laughs> which, which means what? Is there critical thinking? Are they free? So how to be free and critical thinker? You verify the information. So it's for the truth. Exactly, you are interested in the truth and you, are, have, you do everything to make sure that this is the right path to take. And even of all people go in that direction and you know that this is leading to succor, <laughs> to hellfire, to punishment, to suffering, then you don't take it even if you are alone. This is how, this is how we understand the saying of, of Jesus, peace be upon him, that take the, la the least trodden path because from his experience and the experience of previous prophets, people like are like attracted by the, the, the social norms, what other people are doing, okay? No, no, Jesus wants us also to be free thinkers, critical thinkers, even if you are really on the road alone or with very few people. But if that path leads to the truth. But they are taking the least resistant one. And this is where you get into bias. So our brains are very well equipped. But at the same time, it is easy to be distracted. What the psychologists called hubris. You see, it's, it's a shortcut if you want to understand it, I mean, literally, a shortcut. This is the easiest way to go. Now, if we, we need it sometimes, okay, like to, to get other, to survive, okay? If, if, uh, if, uh, if somebody, like, use the horn, you immediately take an action and you, you don't have time to think. If you, <laughs> if you let yourself think about it, you will be dead. So we need it. Okay, but not all the time. There are things where you need to think slowly about them. Otherwise, you get into, into the bias, okay? To the hubris, yes. And then when you're born in a certain religion, mm -hmm. I think then that's a shortcut. It's a shortcut, think. yes. Because you're not really thinking, and, mm -hmm. that, and that's, I think, why we are where we are right now. No we question about it. about it. Oh, yeah, and the social media today, <laughs> uncovered that disease to, to its fullest. You can see it now with your own eyes how people are really diverted all the time 
okay and they start really like sending these um, i mean messages and and uh, without really verifying without thinking about it without really raising questions to be honest with you when we talk about a critical thing it is about this this scientific skepticism be skeptic but in a a positive way, in an instructive way, in a programmed way, because your intention is really to reach really the truth. But if everything is said to us and we take it, accept it, and many times, I mean, even in our practice, we notice that it doesn't fit. And then you start digging and you find out that oh, there is something more into the story. And you then you reconstruct things in the right way and you reach the conclusion. It's very, I mean, very serious because you may we take, I mean, the wrong direction and the wrong decision and it may be really detrimental. So in other words, the why Quran we said call, it's amazing. Quran is calling them criminals. They have they have committed a crime against themselves because they have betrayed before anybody else. They have betrayed their own ideals. Because if you ask people, they say, oh, I am for justice. I am for the truth. But their actions are not consistent with what they are really claiming. And so they start really like, talking and broadcasting, okay, without the processing really the information. This is what we call cognition, is that right? This is the way we process. Everything is coming from outside through our senses, okay? And then we bring it out after we process it, is that right? Now we have, they, they went further to understand that cognition, to think about thinking itself. Metacognition. It's very interesting. It's really like we are supposed to start thinking about the process itself. In other words, we gave the example, people were really following blindly others without. So they were interested in the result. No matter what proof they have or evidence for that result. No, doesn't, they don't care about it. You see what I mean? If, if that person they like, they want to bring him to the Senate or they, to, to the House, okay? Regardless, because they are interested in, in the result itself. They are not interested in the process. You see what I mean? They would have, uh, I'm sorry. They, yes, 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 they, please. I mean, they're processing, you know, we are processing, but, uh, and they would probably come out to the truth had there been not the influence of a tabut. <laughs> <laughs> all, all these Without factors, the yeah. You know, we will all no question, come to yeah. the same truth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But and this is why, this, uh, remember, I mean, yeah. this, we are talking about the same surah. Right. We talked about that. Quran brought us the example of the person who was thinking, evaluating the situation, but reached the wrong conclusion because other factors start really affecting his decision. So it's not, so he forgot about the process. If he followed, continued with that process of thinking, evaluating, he would have reached the, con the right conclusion. But what has start? start thinking, oh, what, what people will say about me if I accepted what, what the prophet is suggesting or claiming, okay? What will happen to my interests? How I will look in front of my relatives and the, oh, these elites in Mecca and the way. No question, this played a major role, okay, in diverting. <laughs> so he wants like to reach the conclusion that Muhammad is wrong, <laughs> regardless. Okay, however the process is, is, is following the right process or not. But he wants to reach that. He, then he found something. In huwa illa sihrun yu'thar. It is a magic. And it is, has been transmitted from one generation to the other. <laughs> you see, in huwa illa sihrun. Where is the magic? Where is the magic? Kullu nafsin bima kasabat raheena. 
What is the magic? Uh, excuse me again. Uh, you know, I was reading that this guy, his, his name is, by the way, he's the uh, same namesake as you, Walid something. But I don't okay. care. And this is the point. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Thank saying. you, Noor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Walid um al but this is, um, but, but sorry to say yeah, this, yeah. but this is part of the, I mean, the, the, uh, as if we want to square it right, right. on one person. Right, right. Quran does, it, does not really mention names because we, he wants us to think that this is a human problem. Right. It can affect any one of us. Right. But, uh, oh, I am, oh, this is not me. It's Walid ibn al-Maghira. <laughs> this is the bad guy, all right? The same thing happening today. Everything is this guy. Because of this guy, we are really ha having all these problems. Even if that person says something right, we don't believe it. What? I mean, if this is judge. Judge what they say, okay? However, is, if it has evidence or not. Okay, now. What I was actually going to yeah, say that yeah, so this man, mm -hmm. uh, he said that Muhammad cannot invent all these things. In his mind, he knew that mm -hmm. he was convinced. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, the, the other fellow, uh, Abu Jahl or whatever, mm -hmm. he said, Have you ever seen Muhammad telling lies when he, when he was with mm -hmm. us? He said, Never. Yeah. So he, he cannot tell lies. So in his own mind, mm -hmm. he was convinced that this was the truth. Yes. But in spite of all that, the Tagut, you know, made him sacrifice all his... Uh, you remember his, what uh, one time we were saying that when you say the truth, right. okay, you say the truth because you are interested in the truth. When people lie, also they are, in, they know the truth. <laughs> Otherwise, how they how they lie? If they are lying, I mean on purpose, okay, not like by making a mistake about something, okay, that happens. But no, 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 the the, the true lying when you know the truth and they say the opposite of it or something against it. But there are also another subset; they are not interested in the truth. However. They are not lying and they are not saying the truth at the same time. They are just really interested in themselves. They, they say everything, okay? Because many times you see them contradict, contradicting themselves. They give you really opposite, uh, I mean, statements. I mean, I don't have to go further, you know, I mean, examples uh, for, for that. But you see, the, 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 and Quran said it clearly, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا they rejected, although they knew it inside themselves that it is the truth. It is certain. Quran said two things that you were referring like Tagut. Out of injustice and out of arrogance. Two Two very difficult diseases. You see, so it applies to everybody. Yes, Quran will bring it about like some, I mean, who manifested that in the past so that we can learn from it. But it will take different shapes and forms. Is that right? So that's the, 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 the enter. How to liberate ourselves. Now, if you don't want to be I mean, a blind follower, don't also force others to be blind followers. Yes, this is the, also the, the very important. Right. You see, if you don't ac accept it to yourself, don't be a mean. The means like to, to, to do it for, for others. And this is why Quran is, is really like full of statements that you cannot force anybody to believe. There is no compulsion in religion. You see? وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَآمَنَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كُلُّهُمْ جَمِيعًا If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants everyone, we will be like the, the, the angels, okay? Or all believers, okay? No, 
that's if and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is is granting us that option and really the, the, this is i mean we should be we should have said that before Sartre, Sartre, one of his important statements that the human being is condemned to freedom. So when Quran says, فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمَنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Whoever wants to decide, I mean, about believing or disbelieving, to you. So, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَكُنَّا نُكَذِّبُ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينِ So, these criminals, Okay, they, they used to say that the day of judgment is, is, is a lie. So again, I mean, think about it. I mean, like, the, the belief in the day of a judgment is really liberation from everything that is measured and calculated and this physical world itself. So if we are confined, if we feel that this is the end of it, it becomes really chaining and confining while to believe in something bigger. And this life is the proof for the next. Because people, I have not seen it. How, how am I going? Okay, do you believe in this life? Or you think this is really like uh, virtual or, <laughs> or like uh, imagination? No, it is true. So if it is true, why are you really like denying the possibility of another life? If this life is a truth, it's like when you are driving and you see like a, a deer passing, okay? What should really come to you? And you avoid it. What should come to mind? Immediately. There's another one. Or third or fourth. Is that right? So it made, it, it, for you, it became, you were not thinking about it. Until you see one and then you thought about others. They may or may not show up, but at least, okay, you start thinking that of, of the possibility of another one. What if that, this next life is really bigger and more than this life that we are living? If this is life, the other life is many folds amplified. Quran referred to as al if this is hayat, the, the next life is al hayawan. It's the same word but amplified. It's like when you say maghfira uh, and ghufran, rahma, rahman. You see what I mean? So it's, it's more exaggerated. Okay? So definitely it is really a liberation from the, the confinement of this. Uh, this life. So, at the beginning, yes. You know, uh, but Doctor believes that uh, you know we 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 nobody has experienced mm -hmm. the next life and nobody has come back mm -hmm. and told us. Yes. We understand it because of the Quran. Exactly. And uh, because our own conjecture. This is why, exactly. So the the point is. Uh, this is why I am saying that the, the, this life itself should be enough evidence about the possibility that another life is there. So if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about it, I mean, yeah. that's, that's basically, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a belief. That's yes, a, a belief, blind, yeah. That's but, a blind faith. Yeah. But it's not, again, it's, it's not totally blind. Because, I mean, you are experiencing this a life now. So it is, it's, uh, it's not against, okay? It is for the possibility of it, another it life. Yeah. Or it yeah. Possibility. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a possibility. Yeah, but, which, but again, the fact that it, yeah. you are experiencing it now, okay? If, you cannot deny it. But because you believe in Quran, that's exactly. why you believe in Exactly. Exactly. No question about it. But do you, do you think that these near-death experiences that people have had, and there are multiple books that have come out about people who were almost dead and then mm -hmm. came back, mm -hmm. and they wrote about experiences, yes, yes, and yes. they experienced this something spiritual that, state where, yeah, yeah. which is, an, uh, you yeah. know, sounds like mm -hmm. something like afterlife. Mm -hmm. So 
You know, to me, that is like a yeah. little more. But it's still, I mean, I, I mean, we cannot prove it, okay? No, because prove it. yeah, and then, uh, yeah. And also in that, those experiences, yeah. they depend upon which faith you belong to. Not only that, but I mean, this no, is still an, an individual experience, okay? I mean, I, 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 I cannot deny it. You see, this is the point because I did not experience it, yes. but that person experienced. Yes. I mean, he saw it. <laughs> you are like, I mean, uh, arguing with him about something he experienced you did not experience, yes. and this is the only reason that you are denying it. That's yeah. th this is the yes. argument that. And I think these experiences are not always religious. They are just like. Oh yeah, yeah. What what happened? Like yeah, what happened? About, because I read one by this neurosurgeon, yes. uh, even, I, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, Alexander, mm -hmm. and he talks about this extensively, mm -hmm. about how he was in coma, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. it's a non-religious yeah. event. Yeah. Even the poet that the I... Life yeah. after mm -hmm. Yes. And but in her experiences, if they, you know, they saw the tunnel and yeah. light and going up, but if they believed in Jesus Christ, then they would feel the, his presence yeah. at the end of it. If they were some Buddhist or something, they would feel that presence. Right. Right. No, that's what I mean. They actually only talk about light, if you ever read those stories. Yeah. Afterwards, yeah. it's what thought you put into it, which is just like our experience here. Because yeah. you put a belief yeah. into it. But the, the experience I, I, yeah. is usually just light. Yeah, I, I think the idea that we need really to focus on, it's not like ev uh, there are different ways to prove something, okay? Yes, one way is really like to show something, like to do an experiment and everybody really will. But not everything is like this. Look at your practice, okay? Most of your practice, you depend on previous experiences. Because it happened before, it is possible that it will happen. And you prepare yourself and you prepare your, your patient against it. But can you prove it? It didn't happen. How can, are you going to prove something that did not happen? You see what I mean? So it is everything about, and that's what makes us different from other creatures because we have this concept or, uh, 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 of the future, okay? We, we, and we, because we believe in consequences. Otherwise, we are not like, uh, like the balls on a billiard I mean, like we are saying, okay, this has to push in order to the other to move uh, this ball, like to be. Th there is more than that into the human being because we are thinking about the consequences. Yeah, you know, I, I can share one experience where I, when I was doing trauma in, mm -hmm. um, 10 years ago, 20 to 15 years ago, and there was a black kid who was shot in the chest, and uh, we were going to open his chest to try and, mm -hmm. to, you know, save him. While we were taking him to surgery, he kept saying, I see a light, I see a light. And he kept saying, there's no light here. And then he, he dies on the mm. operating room table. So that's when I kind of realized. And I thought, you know, he's like making it up. But why would a... Somebody uh, dying, I mean, at 60, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make it up. So, yeah. yeah. So I, I... Well, that's why I was saying. It's usually if you hear those experiences, yeah. they talk about light. They don't talk. But then later, when they wake up, they associate something. And that's what humans do, right? Children do that. That's why in trauma work, we have to let them rethink their experience because of whatever belief they put on it, they carry that belief with them. Mm -hmm. But it's really the experience that we have to unravel for them. And then we shift their belief system so that they can function. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, that uh, I had a patient with a brain hemorrhage, you know, and he was totally comatose. And on the CT scans, you know, the brain hemorrhage was increasing and it was like, he was totally uh, non-responsive. And then, you know, I was, the neurologist said, he's gone, everything, full up everything. And, um, you know, I was uh, there and he was a Muslim. So his wife was uh, sitting next to him and then she ran and asked me to come. And he was reciting Surah Yaseen. Mm -hmm. you know? Surah Yaseen. From Quran. Yeah. From Quran, you know. And, uh, she, and she was amazed, you know, because uh, she said, listen, listen. And she would say one verse and he would say the next verse. And she would say one verse and, two, and then the completion of Surah Yaseen and he died, you know. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> so uh, you know it was so amazing yeah. he was yeah. totally totally yeah. unresponsive yeah, you know he had something uh, his brain hemorrhage was mm. increasing i think i think also i mean what is really yeah. of interest to us and in, and in, in, i mean and in, in this discussion about these two paradigms is that uh, 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 to be aware of the consequences okay to to it means that you are responsible if i don't care about the consequences i become irresponsible whatever happened happened okay and that what is really why why the presence of the day of a judgment should start now i mean like here it ha it, it has to be present here in order really to affect this life the same way this life will be present over there I have no doubt in my mind that it is there, but there is something that is separating us from it. I, I approach yeah. it like, what, what if it is not there? Uh -huh. okay. So I have done everything right, because if it is there, then I want to be in a good place. Yeah, yeah. And if it is not there, then I have done good, and, and the good will spread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this well, life. There should be a distinction. So if we do it out of like just in case, I don't know if that's the perfect way to look at it. You know, we really have to have the, the deep belief. Otherwise, it's like you know, more opportunistic. You know, it's nice. Yeah. And in the meantime, if it comes out to be okay, I think we need to step up when we want to say we believe it is there, and that's why we do it not just in case. Yeah. But we believe it because it's in the Quran, and if we believe yeah. in the Quran. No, but, know, but the, you, the the qualifier that you said, uh, okay, if it is not, then I haven't lost anything. No? Yeah, it's like you're hedging your bet. No? I mean, Quran is reminding us. You see, re remind, bringing that issue into our consciousness. Eventually, we have to make that decision. Quran is not going like to force you <laughs> like to do one thing or eventually we have to make the decision. No question that Quran because its role is to guide, is telling us this is the, the better way to go. And this is where we're saying that we can I mean we don't want to play the role of al Nahudu Ma al Khaidin against others and like force them to do something that they don't want to do it. This is why, really, the surah, b believe me, I mean, it ended like this. Kalla innahu tadkira. Kalla balla yakhafoon al akhira. They don't, the, the akhira is not on the, they are not concerned about it. They don't really fear what may happen next, okay? And akhira doesn't mean only al akhira, the next life, but what is happening the next moment, if I do this or that. The whole, I mean, function of Quran is really a, a reminder. Tadkira. And the surah talked about it several times, okay? About the faman sha'a dhakara. Again, it is your decision. It is my decision. It is my will to decide which really side I have to take. وَمَا يَذْكُرُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ Which means that don't think when you are really making a decision you are going against the will of Allah. But no, but in the first place Allah has, has willed to give you the chance to make a decision. To exercise your will. So if I believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the, the absolute will that should become an incentive for us to exercise my own choice, my own volition, my own will. It's not against. And this is where we need always to keep that balance. And I think these two verses make it clear. Okay? man yasha wa yahdi man yasha, which we saw in the same surah. It's the same thing. Okay? It's yasha for both. For the human being, but it is don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not willed that. You are not going against the will. We may be going against the pleasure of Allah. That this is what he likes us to be and where he doesn't like us to be. 
ان تكفروا فان الله غني عنكم ولا يرضى لعباده الكفر if you if the human being decides to go to the extreme and reject and denies everything allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be affected but he doesn't like it for us wa in tashkuru yardahu lakum if you thank him if you behaved out of gratitude he will be happy with that he will be pleased with that this is what he wants us really that is the side he wants us to be on huwa ahlu at-taqwa wa ahlu al-maghfirah he deserves like to to be uh, reminded of all the time taqwa is really like this consciousness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay that uh, that this that will give uh, it's really this compass inside us taqwa is really the compass that will help us to differentiate between what is right and what is wrong it, it's like the gps if you like in today's i mean more than the just a compass it's really the gps that will really help us to guide us what is the right really path really to take and he is at the same time the one who forgive because he knows our limitations you see we he knows that we but really maghfira we should not look at it only in the negative sense meaning that only to wipe out the previous errors but every level you reach even if it is good you need to make istighfar to move to the next you see otherwise we are stuck and then if we are stuck we start falling down this is why muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when they they asked him how come you ask for for maghfira he said that inni la astaghfiru allah fi al yawm akthara min 70 marra many times during the day the prophet will be asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for for maghfira but they told him oh, and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you not only in the past and for the future ma taqaddama min dhanbika wa ma ta'akhkhar he said afala akunu 'abdan shakura shukr he wants to be among those who really worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of gratitude so he will move from he will not even the prophets may be stuck in fact it's more more important because the higher you are you go it becomes more difficult like to move to the next level sometime in daily life when you say sorry to somebody it mm-hmm. kind of shows you you know almost in the daily life like shows you that you're not you know arrogant person mm-hmm. right yes so, yes yes so it's liberating yourself from saying it, that yes. okay, you know i am able to say you know sorry to somebody is not going to hold me back it's not going to think i'm not going to be the lesser exactly. person yes. because i say sorry mm. right so i think that's the, the concept behind it is that that you know saying sorry and and saying you know moving out looking for a better answer you're looking exactly. for a higher value that, exactly that so in say. other words it liberate us from both yeah. from the the bad as well as from the certain level of good to go to the better remember i mean th- this is more difficult to see it's easy like to see it in the negative sense okay but really in the positive sense is more difficult and you see the how to move to i mean if you stuck in one at a certain level okay how to liberate yourself from that level to go to the next yes muhammad you know very good yeah and this is again this is where subhanallah today i was thinking about uh, something very similar <coughs> that um, ha- no question that the context help us really to understand okay like and like for example this verse uh, immediately you know that the the prayer has not taken the shapes yet the way we know it today because it it evolved really over time it could have been basically in the form of 
of supplication or dua or something. The the uh, the uh, 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 primitive, if you like, form, if you like, of of, of a prayer. Okay, uh, or the the. Uh, um, uh, the primary, if you like, or the, uh, uh, what, what they call it, uh, uh, primordial, <laughs> okay, of, of, the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the prayer as we know it, okay, later on, as I knew it really later on. But so, uh, and, and the, the, what is more important, what is really different for Quran, is that you have the surah, itself becomes really the context. You see, and you start understanding the verse in the context of the whole surah. In other words, why this verse will appear in this surah? It could have really uh, uh, revealed later on, and the Prophet will say, put it in this surah. Because this is how the later generations will understand it. So it, it should not be I, I will take both approaches. I will understand it in the context where, as it happened, but later on, it will be understood in the context of the surah itself. And this is what makes Quran really for all generations. I don't want to limit myself. It helps me to understand, because the, in, which may mean that the surah, the, the, the salat, and its basic meaning, and not in its shape, because its shape will change. But <laughs> what is really meant by, by the prayer itself, and how it is going to help you. And later on, when it has been perfected and completed, now I can say, okay, how each part of it will really help me in this process of liberation from being a hostage to what I have earned in this life, or achieved in this life. So you think you understand it this way, then salat is just a meaning to something. Exactly. Regardless of its shape. Right. Exactly. So that part then brings me to another one where we can say then that you can pray by doing just a prayer by yourself, like without doing the whole ritual of the salah. And so, because Allah wants us to remember Him. Yes. And can you remember Him in any other way? Oh, yeah. And so, if somebody tells me, you know, I'm in, up in um, the you know, space and I don't have time to, to do salah like we do, yeah. and he's praying or she's praying, is that adequate? So can, and can that be applied to our children who will say, oh, we yeah. are too busy doing this and we are going to do this? Are we, should I just say, no, no, you have to pray right there? Or, like, how do you... Without diluting the uh, yeah. obviously the actual yes prayer. yes yeah you see the the, the the whole idea okay is we, we like ourselves to to reach the perfect okay and but if I have if I am not able to reach that I should not deny the less perfect right you see what right. I mean <laughs> I'll tell you this story. Uh, Probably it's imaginative. I mean, somebody came to the to the ruler and uh, complained about some uh, maulana or uh, sheikh or whatever that he is teaching the people to to pray th three times per day instead of five. He said, "Bring that person, <laughs> okay, to me." I mean, like, so he asked him, "Is it true that you are teaching the people that to pray three times, not five? He said, I have reached with them to pray three times per day. If you are able to bring them to pray five, I will be like, I will be very happy. And I will. So in other words, yeah, so in other words, I mean, uh, yes, sometimes we become a uh, little obsessed, okay, with the, with the perfect. That's fine. I mean, I have n nothing against that. But in a practical way, how we can bring people gradually, okay? If, if, if we say, oh, this is not good, they will not do anything. No, 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 this is good. But let them by action yes. know that there is right. more. And then when they get used to the two or three, they can get, this is how we learned it. We start like asking our friends to come to Friday. Before asking them, and then we will, okay, 
why don't we go and pray for uh, Zohar together? Or, I mean, like, gradually, and then they got it. Okay. Now, the point is, in addition to that, because I think you brought another interesting thing, how to be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are only stations. Probably they take half an hour of, of, of the 24 hours. If you, uh, if you add, I mean, how much the prayer will take? Is this really, we have only to, to, uh, to uh, worship Allah, only, uh, only half an hour? Half an hour? Right. No. And this is why when, when you read, for example, in the Muslimin, Muslimat, Wal Mu'minin, Wal Mu'minat, Wal Qanitin, Wal Qanitat, Wal Sabirin, Wal Sadiqin, Wal Sadiqat, Wal Sabirin, Wal Sabirat, Wal Khashi'in, Wal Khashi'at is a symbol of prayer. So they pray, both men and women. Wal Sa'imin, Wal Sa'ima. Okay. Wal Hafidin, Furujahum, Wal Hafidat. Both are clean and they, they avoid fahisha and, and big sins and everything. But then Allah says, Wal Dhakirin, Allah Kathiran, Wal Dhakirat. Those who are remembering Allah. So it is really like at the top. I mean, all these things, all these attributes, okay, are fine. But the higher is really to be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. So if the prayer does not help me with that, there is something wrong about it. You see, this is how we... So if somebody is aware of Allah all the time, okay, and so it should be easy for them to, to accept, really. The, the, and again, we need to see how the, again, as I was talking to the kids, okay, they start to see a meaning for it. I, I'm telling you the truth. I mean, as if like, oh, they, they change the way they think about things, including something that is important and dear to us, but they don't want like to do it just because other people are asking them to do it. You see what I mean? So this is where I think we need really to go. Uh, as I said, uh, we, we like to move towards the perfect, but should not be undermining what is less. Until yeah, that will be, I mean, yeah. Uh, we have to encourage people for everything good they are doing. This is way, I mean, you balance it. You are not diluting what you believe in, what is the best. But at the same time, you are not saying to the people, oh, don't do anything. Either, uh, either I will give you zero or hundred. It doesn't not work. Or not. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And the eventual, the, 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 the highest objective is really to become among those who are aware and conscious of Allah all the time. وَالذَّكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّكِرًا Before these verses, we were saying that this argument that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capturing for us from the future, from the next life if you like, it should happen here. So, because as we said, over there, that conversation will not really change the outcome. So the Quran said, فَمَا تَنْفَعُهُمْ شَفَاعَةُ الشَّافِعِينَ On that day, intercessions from others is not going to help them. You see, so, so that, that conversation has to happen here so that we can do something about it. فَمَا لَهُمْ عَنِ التَّذْكِرَةِ مُعْرَدِينَ Why are they are unconcerned about being reminded. Tadkira, again, okay? So the, the job of the Prophet is on إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ This is your job. You are not musaitir. You are not somebody who is really in control of the affairs of the people. It's your job is really just to bring the message, okay? فَمَا لَهُمْ عَنِ التَّذْكِرَةِ مُعْرِضِينَ كَأَنَّهُمْ حُمُرٌ مُسْتَنْفِرَةٌ فَرَّتْ مِنْ قَسْوَرَةٌ You know when uh, you see these uh, zebras like in, in the wild, like uh, fleeing from, 
wilder animals from like um, lions. lions or tigers or or from even sometimes really like uh, 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 hunters. Okay, so it's a very interesting image that they are fleeing from tadhkira, <laughs> from this admonition, from these advices, from these recommendations, from these reminders, like these <laughs> zebras, if you like, fleeing from being attacked. So it's, uh, in the Quran is raising it in, in a question. بَلْ يُرِيدُ كُلُّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ أَنْ يُؤْتَى صُحُفًا مُنَشَّرًا This, the arrogance that is really preventing us, preventing them from listening or accepting really the, the reminder. The Quran is saying this arrogance manifesting itself, some, every one of them wants to really like to receive separately the, the, the revelation. You see, I mean like, okay, why Muhammad Why Muhammad is receiving and not us? So they want each one of them. So in other words, are they after the truth? They don't, they should not care. I mean, from whom it is really, or through whom it is coming, if they are really interested in the truth. They are interested in themselves. Oh, oh, I received the message directly so it is really their ego that is preventing them from really accepting and this is why they flee they turn their backs okay uh, because i mean as if like something that will really take from them something that is dear to them in fact it's really on their own really interest and so this is how i mean the the the, the surah really ends with Again, the importance of the, uh, remember the, the surah is going or, or revolving around Qumfa Andir. And also Muhammad Sallallahu being only a reminder, bringing tadkira. Okay? So, and we saw the different things that the Prophet had really to warn his people about and warn us about. And, and uh, uh, again, remember that this is a very, very early surah, okay? And it's compatible with really like, okay, now you receive the message, what are you going to do about it? Okay? R rise up and warn the people so that they will be successful, happy, in this life and in the next. I'd like to, yes. uh, if you would juxtapose this, um, another ayah in the Quran, uh, when Allah says, Inna hadaynahu mm sabila. -hmm. Inna hadaynahu mm sabila. -hmm. Inna shakura wa inna kafura. wa inna kafura, so exactly. So what my understanding from there is everybody, whether he's a kafir or not, he knows the, the, the truth mm -hmm. in his mind. Yeah. When he doesn't accept the truth, he that's when He's, like you said, being arrogant. Mm -hmm. He's yes. defying the truth. Dhulman wa knowing in his the inner part of yes. heart the, the truth, right? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, you see, this is where Quran uh, is helping us in really uh, exploring the human psyche. I, don't, I cannot do, know what is inside you. Yeah. You don't know what is inside me. I know. Okay. But insan wa ala nafsihi basira. وَلَوْ أَلْقَى مَعَاذِرًا We all have insight of what is inside us, no matter what excuses we can give to the outside. This is very also powerful. Okay, so Quran is like bringing before us what is happening inside. In other words, that it, it will help us like to design how we are going to approach? Where is the disease? It's like the same way. This is how we approach the physical diseases. Okay, I want to understand, okay? So I ask the patient a question, I examine the patient, I do labs, I put all the data together to understand where I should really direct my management, my, my treatment. And the same thing, this is more difficult. 
And it took, I mean, humanity a long time to understand this. I mean, even today when you see, uh, I mean, the, the advancement in, in psychology and how our brain works and uh, our, how they know that, that we have more uh, uh, knowledge about, how our, um, about memory, about feelings, emotions, the centers, how they interact with each other. You see how we think, it's, it's amazing. Don't you think that this is helpful to, to approach, how to approach really our own kids, our own students, our own selves in the first place? So it's, these explorations are very important for us. How come we were able, if I know from that conversation, where are <laughs> the, the, the problems? How can I save these people from that destination? And at the same time, I, I know what will make me, okay, a person with power, capacity, resolve, control, you see, Ashab al yameen You see, th this is how you, you want, and then you if, if you, if you try it with like younger, and with the younger generation, they see value. Oh my God, you are asking me to be a determined, and today, my, my teacher told me that you are a very determined person. They start connecting. <laughs> you see? You see where, I mean like, she was told by her teacher that you are a determined person. And now she heard me saying, wow, if you want to be Ashab al Yamin, you have to be somebody with determination, with resolve. Which means that you have liberated yourself from everything that <laughs> will chain you and prevent you from being a determined person. You liberated yourself from rest and being lazy and, and not really doing, and you have the capacity, but you are not using it. It will work, it will work in a practical way. It's not philosophy. As some people may say, it, oh, why you are, like, I mean, like talking a lot about it is easy. Do this and don't do that. I mean, this doesn't work. Try it. I mean, why we are, you think we are in this situation? Why our kids are really like not, we, are, we don't see them? Yeah, yeah, you see what I mean? I mean, but if you give them these messages, believe me, sooner or later they will think about it. But you will have provided them with these tools. Especially when they go to college. They are bombarded with so many things. Is that right? And they, if they have the tools, they know how to, to face these challenges and come out of them stronger, not weaker. Or unscathed. Yeah, yes, yes. I, 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 I believe it. Honestly, I believe in that, and we need to believe in them. But don't say, I believe in them, and we, don't, we have not done our job. We have not equipped them with the necessary armamentarium so that they can pick from, from that bag, that tool, what they call it, uh, uh, the tool, uh, the, uh, what they call it, uh, the, 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 the toolbox, okay. They have, they have lot of things in their toolbox. But if it is empty, they cannot really like do anything about it. Can I get some, this was a very interesting discussion. I have a lot to say about a lot of the mm -hmm. topics, but one of the things that has stuck with me is what Shaquille was saying about saying you're sorry and our kids in college being bombarded by social cues that are different in a way. So I have lawyers in my family. So they say, never say you're sorry because that <laughs> incriminates you as having been guilty. If you're in a car accident, if you're in a medical situation, never say you're sorry. So right there, here's, here's your social structure of lawyers, attorneys, counseling you not to say you're sorry. Now, years later, we're coming to the well, say, I had someone I know was in England, and he was in one of those circles, and mm -hmm. he got in a car accident. 
he was going the wrong way, he was on the wrong side of the road, it was his truck. <laughs> and the guy got out of the car and apologized to him. And he was like, what? <laughs> it was his fault. The other guy came out, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, because in England they're so polite. And he was so taken aback by this, yet his insurance covered it so much, not an issue. But now in healthcare, they've come full circle, and now they're saying, if you say you're sorry, it will decrease a chance. A very high percentage, less chance that they will sue you. Mm -hmm. Because I understand that you're sorry. You don't need to do it as an accident. Yeah. And what are you going to Mistakes do? happen. So and it's yeah. taken us all this time to come full circle from the very structures of society that are teaching our young people how to be professionals in the world. And really, it comes down to when you, sh when you take it all, strip it all away, it, it's just basic. It's the basic teachings that are. Yeah. Yeah. You know what they say that the, to cure the malaise of the U.S. society is to reduce the number of lawyers. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think that, and to I mean um, uh, back to the idea how really to connect this with our own freedom. You see, freedom is not uh, 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 the, the way it is. Uh, presented in a very simplistic way, okay, that the ability to choose, okay, oh, I have a choices. It's more than that. It's really the ability, it is a capacity. How to move from one state to one that is higher. This is not, not it is not in the common language of the people. When you yeah. make the bad one, like, mm -hmm. like several times when we're talking about falling, you yes. fall, you go back down. And yeah. Back and in other words, uh, are we working on ourselves to refine our own character? What does it really mean like to, to become a better human being? So you are refining your character. You are moving from one state to a higher one. That lo requires a lot of effort. And really, it's not easy sometimes to say, sorry, because your ego will come and say, why you are saying sorry? He's not, he's not better than you. You are better than him. Oh, he, he's, he doesn't mean, and I mean nothing or something like that. No, this is, it has nothing to, I mean, it's, again, where you are and what is your objective? If your objective is really like to really to go to that higher level, meaning that you believe and something higher. So you work towards it. You, you, be, you move from one orbit to the other. This is why Quran always say, فَمَا لَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُوا If you are not moving to the next, Quran is asking the question, why they don't believe? Because you cannot move to something higher unless you believe in it. Then you, you become, you dedicate your life to reach that level. <laughs> Yarhamukumullah, bless you. So it is a matter of how to refine your character. And this is why now they are bringing, like you are saying, how we come full circle, because they brought values into the mix. Today they cannot, I, mean, I took just uh, last week, uh, I renewed my BLS, basic life support, CPR. Uh, uh, anybody has taken it recently? No, not recently. Not, uh, take it, re uh, but when, when your time is up and you see the change. Yeah. No, I know the change. But the change is not only in the, in the scientific data and what works better and everything, but see, I want you to see the social aspect that was added. How the team has to, to work. The, the level of respect. So they bringing values, never, never. I have not seen this before. But because, I mean, the trend now is to bring, because they realize that you cannot separate the, the, your values from what you are doing scientifically. Give you an example. Can you imagine some, a scientist working in the lab, producing data, and uh, uh, leading to meaningful conclusions 
and that guy is not fair and just because it's easy to manipulate any type of data and bring whatever conclusion you want. But you cannot, you are not a scientist. So can, can you separate the values <laughs> from, from science? There is no way. And, and, and the examples are so many. So alhamdulillah, we need really like to be thankful that this has it made our job easier. Before you, if you talk about this, oh, you are talking religion. Uh, th this is, has nothing to do with, with science. But today, if you talk about values, nobody will tell you, oh, you are br uh, bringing, uh, I mean, like uh, religion into the mix. You see, and you don't have. You don't have to bring religion. I mean, in the way, I mean, we, like people talk about it or the way they understand it as if they are in, in the masjid or in the, in the, in, in the ch uh, chapel or in the church or a synagogue. No, no, it's not, this is not the idea. The idea how to bring people around something that has the capacity to bring them together. Something that is common to all of them. You talk about respect, who will be against you? If you talk about teamwork, who will be against you? You see what I mean? If you talk about injustice, who will be against you? Every morning, they have this morning in the leadership in the hospital. They have a morning report. Every day they start with a saying. The saying is telling them how to, to take care of, it, of the patient. Or if the patient appears in the emergency room with this disease, how? all the things have to do with, 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 with values. How to accept the opinion of others, how to make sure that, that you are not perfect. You, you, the, the, the way to perfection is to, to really like learn from others, so on and so forth. So what does that tell you? that people start really to realize the importance of these things in their life. So it's, now I can speak their language. You see, I can speak their language. If I bring something, okay, that I believe in, but I was reminded of from Quran, I can put it on the table. I don't have to tell them this is from this or that. But they will, they will accept it because it makes sense to them. This is my, I mean, I, uh, this is my, my, uh, like, uh, objective is really to bring something that will be helpful to the other, the same, if I find it helpful for me. And believe me, people are not blind. They see and they, they accept. If they, if they, if you bring it in a convincing way, they, they will accept it. So don't be afraid. Share, I mean, these important ideas. Like this one, Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. You can bring it in different ways, and people will accept it. It's very powerful, very deep. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you very much.